Okay, today we're going to talk about DNA replication, and replication means to copy. All right, remember before a cell divides, we first must copy its DNA. If you think back to the cell cycle, the S phase is the copying phase of the DNA. And if we think about the structure of the DNA in its double helix, that's the way that the DNA gets copied. DNA polymerase is an enzyme. Remember that, that um, ASE ending means it's an enzyme. And what it does is it hooks together individual nucleotides to make a new strand of DNA. The base pairing in the double helix explains how DNA could be copied. Um, each base on one strand only pairs with one base on the opposite strand. Remember the rule, A pairs with T and C pairs with G. Each strand of the double helix has all of the information needed to reconstruct the other half because of the base pairing rules. So if you know one half of the DNA, you can already know the other half. We say that the two strands are what we call complementary, meaning if you know one, half, one, you know the other. Think about complementary angles. If you know one, you know the other because they have to add up to be 180. So the same thing goes with DNA strands. They're complementary because if you know one half, you know it's A on one side, then you know the other side had to have been a T. The duplication of DNA is called replication. That's the copying of the DNA, making an exact copy of every gene in every chromosome of our DNA. That helps us to make sure that every cell has the same complete set of our DNA. During replication, um, the DNA molecule separates into two strands and then we make two new strands that are complementary uh, following the rules of base pairing. Those bases again, uh, adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine. And each new strand of the double helix serves as a template or a model for the new strand. The first thing that happens during the replication process is the two strands of the double helix separate or unzip. We have a special enzyme that does this and the two halves become separate. So over here we have one, ha one strand and then on the other side we have the other strand. There are a bunch of nucleotide bases floating around in the nucleus and as the, each new strand forms, the bases are adding according to the rules of base pairing. So if we have a cytosine, then we'll have a guanine pair up, and if we have an adenine, we'll have a thymine pair up. The result of the DNA replication is two DNA molecules that are identical to each other and identical to the original molecule. Each DNA molecule from, has one of the original strands and one of the new strands. Enzymes play an important role in replication of DNA. Uh, the first enzyme has to unzip the DNA and that breaks the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs and unwinds the two strands of the molecule. That allows each strand to serve as a template for the new strand of DNA. The main enzyme involved in replication is called DNA polymerase, and that enzyme uh, goes along and bonds the individual nucleotides in the new strand to each other and to make the new DNA strand. 
The other thing that DNA polymerase does, it's the proofreader, and it makes sure that each new DNA strand is a perfect copy of the original. The tips of the chromosomes are known as telomeres. That's the very end of the DNA strand. Uh, it's called the telomere, and that's really hard to copy in, in the replication process. And over time, DNA actually gets lost from the telomeres every time a chromosome is duplicated or copied. So there's a special enzyme called telomerase that compensates for this problem by adding extra DNA to the, the telomere, to the end of the chromosome, that makes the chromosome slightly longer and making it less likely that important genes are lost from the telomeres during replication. So if anything's lost, it's this short, repeated DNA sequence, and it keeps important information from getting lost. In, in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, replication looks a little bit different. Remember prokaryotes, those are things like bacteria, and eukaryotes are things that have a nucleus like you do. The replication in prokaryotic cells starts from one single point and proceeds in two opposite directions until the chromosome gets copied. But in eukaryotic cells, they have a lot more DNA, so the replication begins at dozens or even hundreds of places on the DNA, proceeding in both directions until each chromosome gets completely copied. Prokaryotes, like bacteria, typically have a single circular DNA molecule. It just is, a, is one circle, and so it begins with the DNA, begin replication here, and it goes around one side on one strand, and then starts here and goes the other side on the other strand. But eukaryotic cells, like you, can have a thousand times more DNA, and so all that DNA has to be copied. And remember, all of our DNA in eukaryotic cells are found in the nucleus. In most prokaryotes, like bacteria, DNA replication doesn't start. We get a special regulatory protein. We talked about those cyclins and controlling the cell cycle. And then that triggers the beginning of DNA replication. And so the replication happens in uh, two directions. So one strand copies in this direction and the other strand copies in this direction until we get to the whole chromosome being copied. Oftentimes the two chromosomes produced by replication in a prokaryote, um, the chromosome gets attached to the cell membrane and then when the cell splits to form two new cells, we wind up with two chromosomes, one in each of the new cells. Eukaryotic chromosomes in the nucleus, um, the DNA has typically much bigger than those of the prokaryotes and can be up to a thousand times more DNA. In eukaryotic cells, we begin in multiple places, so we'll start here, we'll start here, we'll start here, we'll start here, and they proceed in both directions until the chromosome gets completely copied. The two copies of the DNA that we produce in replication, they remain closely associated with each other, meaning they just stay real close together until we, the cell enters the uh, prophase of mitosis. And at that point, when we're in prophase, the chromosomes condense, and the uh, two chromatids, the two copies, become visible and then they line up in the middle during metaphase, and then during anaphase of mitosis, they separate from each other, and that gives us two cells with a complete set of our genes coded in our DNA. And that's how DNA replication occurs.